Welcome to Blind and Knitting with Donna. Uh, this is number two of uh, my podcasts and I did an introductory one. Hopefully you've seen that. If you'd like to subscribe, just hit the button down below and I'll put all of it, the links in as well. So yeah, we I talked last time about being blind, legally blind and the, my love of knitting and all crafts. So I've got some stuff to show you today. Um, and yeah so what how my two weeks has been what's happened my last two weeks is usually what people start with isn't it uh first thing is my brother sent me my dad's medals or a copy of my dad's medals my dad's medals got lost and um so we got uh, those and i'll be so proud to see my grandkids wear them at anzac um and i believe this the soldiers that own them wear them on one side and the, if you're a family member of the soldier you wear them on the other so I'll have to learn which is the right side but that was kind of cool um yeah really chuffed about that one what else has happened this week oh let me think we had no rotary so that didn't happen um we just couldn't use the room oh, went to the Bee Gees um it was a band, takeoff band, and they were just amazing, just amazing. I really enjoyed it. And they uh, went with a group of girls, some girlfriends, about five, six of us. And we went had a lovely dinner first, and that was yummy. And uh, then went to the BG. So that was kind of nice for the for the week. Um, work wise, the stats and funding. It's my own business, and and I get government money. And this week. I've had to put my funding grants in, so it's been full of stats and looking at detail. Not particularly great at detail, I have to say, uh, but I've got some amazing team members that work for me that ha ha help. So yeah, uh, yeah, that that was that's been a difficult time. Uh, I went to guitar. Uh, we're going to put on a little mini show, do about four songs. We haven't been practicing. Not, I, Donna doesn't practice much anyway so uh, but yeah that was a bit of fun as well so nice week a nice two weeks yeah yeah not too bad at all done quite uh, oh that's the first the week before last I got to work Monday morning and the minute I walked in the door um, my daughter who works for me said mum we've been in close contact with um, someone who is symptomatic a COVID symptomatic who has been with someone who is COVID positive. Oh, so it was my granddaughter's birthday the weekend before and we'd had dinner all together the whole, and uh, we had beat someone that was at our table was symptomatic. Anyway, to, um, so we had to go and self-isolate for five days. Uh, I wasn't symptomatic so I didn't have to have a test but my daughter was and she had to have a test so once the negative test came back we were okay but meant to you know I had to work from home but also got a lot of knitting done which is <laughs> it's always, always good uh, so that's one advantage of lockdown I suppose and in, in isolation is that uh, as I said we live rurally so uh, it's a 20 minute trip in so if I don't go to work and work from home there's 40 minutes in the day that I've got extra so it does make a huge difference when you work from home a really considerable difference and so yeah that was busy so what's been on my needles well last my introductory one uh last my last podcast i was wearing my pink um skeins rose hip jersey and i was talking about the the jersey that really got me motivated again into um, knitting and getting into the knitting world with excitement and so this is it. So it's the Oatmeal by Truly Myrtle, uh, Libby Johnson's pattern. It is a knit from the, uh, where's the pattern? Da, da, da. Had it all here for you. No, oh, so organised, I'm disorganised. Um, anyway, it's knit from the bottom up, circular, uh, and separated for the uh, front and the back. It has set in sleeves. They could have been a smidge longer. That's me going into Sleeve Island because I've got very long arms. 
Uh, so I do think I could have made them a smidge longer. However, you don't want them hanging in the dishwater when you're doing the dishes. So, but it's a lovely fit, really fits nice around here. Uh, again, I've made it with the Skeins wool called Pure Elaine um, and it's Skeins Vintage. It's a really nice wool. It's 100% New Zealand wool. It is, um, you know, it feels like a solid wool jersey. It's one of those ones you could wear on a really cold day, but it's not scratchy at all. Uh, it's actually softened with washes with um, after blocking as well. So stand up, show you the... So it's got nice shaping to it, which is lovely. Uh, nice shaped arms. As I say, I could have made them just a smidge longer. I really like the garter stitch on the neckline, etc. But it's a lovely fit. It's comfortable. And it was, it was one that really got me motivated to get back into knitting because there was wrap and turns, short rows, circular knitting, three needle bind offs. I'd never done any of those, never even heard of them. So YouTube got a thrashing. <laughs> um, but um, Trilly Myrtle's patterns are, are good too. So that helped. So that's uh, my one of my FOs. Uh, another FO I have, and I, sorry, I couldn't find the pattern, but I will. Um, this is called Bentley. It's a tin can knits jersey, and it's um, cardigan, I should say. It's, uh, I've knitted it out of what's called wool cot, and it's um, merino and cotton. So it's 80% merino and cotton, and the cotton is through the centre, and the merino is sort of fluffed out around it, so it's not applied and I'm not sure what the name of it is there's a good thing for me to learn but it's just oh my gosh it's so soft and squishy it's just beautiful and it was such a joy to knit I really did love knitting this um I do struggle with certain fabrics different uh, certain wools and colors with my sight challenges so with this one um it has just a little the front panels have a little cute little um, like a little flowerette type thing on it that was super easy to do and um, nice um, round neck now I didn't I only just put buttons I only put one button at the top um, so, because I'm not really uh, when I wear cardigans I'm not really one for having all the buttons done up you know I'm 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 a, I'm a big woman I'm you know I'm big busted and I don't like that when buttons sort of <laughs> gape open so um, I've made this one just so that it just sits uh, open with a button at the top. It's got also got quite cute little splits in the sleeves, and I put a button on them. I uh, like my button choice. It went with the wall really well. I'm not sure if you can see that. But it was a beautiful, and it's got a halo to it. You can see the little halo there. It's just lovely wool to knit. Really enjoyed it. Enjoyed it so much and loved the colour so much that I'm actually going to go and buy another jersey lot because, um, and I talked about my 60 to 60 challenges. One of my challenges, one of the things that's on my list, is to knit a um, colourway um, jersey, you know, with the across here all colour, colours like the old fashioned ferro. I know it's not ferro, it's called colourway, but um, I've never done one. And I think this would be beautiful as the jersey with some, a really cool colour panel in it. Um, it just, it was lovely to knit. And um, <laughs> they always say that your favourite wool is the one you've just finished, but uh, that is a particularly nice wool and I'd be happy to go and buy that again. So it's Woolcott, W-O-O-L-C-O-T. I'm assuming that means wool and cotton. Um, when I find the, and I'm sorry about that, but when I find the... Um, tag for the wool and I, uh, I I meticulously keep these things and I try and be so organized but um, it, because I'm such a craft person and, and I have so many projects and things going it does get a little lost in in, in the world <laughs> anyway that's my f finished object I have one that is I would say almost finished object uh, I've never knitted a full ply jersey for myself and so is another challenge for me it's like okay let's try a four ply um push yourself and see whether that works and i've never really done a great deal of lace work uh oh and uh, the bentley bentley by tin can knits was um top down circular needles uh, so that was new for me as well 
so I, I did enjoy that and I loved that you know you don't have um, scenes or anything to, to do so uh, yeah I thought I'd, I'd try my next mission was to try a four ply um, I wanted something that had um, motley speckles in it I just sort of had a picture in my head of something um, speckly and pink pink would be one of my favorite colors so I went a hunting and I found this wool it's called Rosario 4 Marianne Mary Ann, and it's a really pretty, if you can see that, um, pink, that's the label, um, now I see why people do that, uh, yes, and it's got sort of rust and purple and grey, and I thought, oh, that's, you know, it's kind of that smoky pink, which I, I just adored that smoky pink jersey that I wore on my introduction, I loved that colour of that Skeins Vintage Rose Hip. And this is very similar, so um, I was excited about that. So um, I say that it's a work in project grease or a whip. Uh, having said that, oh, there's my uh, gauge. I was trying it out on much smaller needles. I think that was a 3.5 and that was a, a 4. I didn't like the 4, it was just too loose. It was too whole, you could see through it. So I ended up doing a 3.75. Um, which just was a lovely fabric and gave me gauge so um, that was that and the pattern I chose is called raindrops it's a tin can knits again and I suppose I, because I've just finished one tin can knits the Bentley cardigan I thought I'll go for another one uh, raindrops it was a top down with a yoke and I've not ever done one of those before so that, that was for the challenge it also had a pretty lace and they do look like raindrops actually I can see why they say that it's raindrops so that was the pattern and um, it, this is pretty much finished except for putting buttons on and tidying up a few loose ends so I'm saying it's a whip but it is could be considered a FO so there it is uh, yeah it's really pretty love the colour um, so I haven't put any buttons on that yet. So it's got the same thing as the Bentley. That might be something that the Bentley do. Where you have the button and the split in the sleeve. It's a three-quarter sleeve. Um, which I'm quite look at liking. It's kind of a blooms out. And then you decrease here so that it comes in. Like a little puff. The lace um, work is really pretty. It's lovely and light. Um, it's kind of one of those woman my age does get rather hot at times so um, this will be one that can kind of keep me warm but the risk of not getting overheated um, it's quite long but again I'm I'm not a little woman uh, you know I'm six foot and I'm a size 18 um, pushing to an 18 19 really <laughs> I'd like to say not a 20 but um, I'm, I'm on the bigger size of the 18 rather than the smaller uh, and and I'm, I've got incredibly long arms and, and a long body and big busted. So, you know, anything I knit, and I was worried about a full ply because, as I say, I haven't done full ply and I thought, gosh, this is going to go on for a gazillion years. Um, and but I'm so happy with it. Love the colour. And, and, and it's knitted up really cool with the purple. I, I thought I might get some nice either dark purple or some sort of rusty gold um, plain pants up that I can make to go with it because now that I've got the top I have to make some pants to go with it <laughs> um yeah enjoyed the tin can knits really enjoyed them they they were really fun to knit um the lace was easy I didn't have any problem with that uh, although it, it's not a reg it, well it is sort of a regulate regular pattern up the top and then it sort of flares out into like spots that are sort of not um, you know they just look like they're random they're, they're not quite random but they kind of look like they're random um, yeah so I haven't worn it I've blocked it I've just got to sew buttons on get some threads off and I think I've still got some markers inside so I'm calling it a whip but it's pretty much close to a FO so um, yeah that was uh, my one of my uh, almost FOs what else have I got on my needle so I'll show you <laughs> my
my Japanese knot bags, which I made the other day. I've got some cheapest chip pieces of material from the op shop. Um, they're just old curtaining. You can see the, the lining, you know, lined curtaining fabric, upholstery fabric. And you make, I just cut out a saucer shape, a dinner plate shape. You know, you do one short handle. You're thinking this is really odd. And one really quite long handle. And so it's, you put the long handle through the short handle. It's called a Japanese knot bag. And it takes a lot. That's, that's quite a bit in there. I'll, sh I'll show you, pardon me. Um, but it seals it shut. You can uh, take your knitting with you. You can put it over your arm and you can knit while you're holding it with your, with your long arm. You don't have to look for, especially with sight problems. Some, you know, bags have two handles, and I'm always sort of scratching around looking for the second handle. With this one, you've just got one handle, and everything's kept in there nice and firm. So I have made, and I'm going to make more. Uh, made quite a few of them actually, um, and all of my projects are in my Japanese knot bags. Uh, I have got a project in just a drawstring which I made. And, and you know that's self-explanatory just a square with a bit of drawstring in it um the thing yeah you can't sort of carry that around and knit at the same time that's anything whereas a japanese knot bag you can hook it over your arm and you can knit if you're on a plane or on a bus or you know you don't have to put it on the ground it's, you just hook it on your arm and have it hanging really really useful um i believe you can get patterns for them but i just made it up um yeah, so that's something you could try. Maybe I've actually really enjoyed them. And they do take a lot. I mean, I had my, um, both those Bentleys were both in my Japanese um, bags. So the what I have on my needles uh, are definitely whips at the moment. So I'm looking for the pattern. There it is. I'll do a lot of I'm looking for, because <laughs> that's what I do. Um, it's a bit like if you imagine um, when I'm trying looking for something, it's like looking through a, telescope and when you look at a distance you so you can say so somebody says oh I'll have a look at that tree over there and you can find the tree and then you go over there and then you come back and you blow it if you can find the tree again and that's kind of what my sight's like it's like I can see that and then I look away and then it's like where is it <laughs> yeah so uh, this is called the leaf top uh, that's it there I'm sorry I don't know whose uh, pattern it is uh, it was one from Ravelry um, and the reason I liked it is it was 12 ply and because I'd just done a 4 ply I wanted a, a quick knit so I had been walking around Uncle Bill's as you do and I saw cheapest chips it's 100% acrylic but this oh I forgot to say that that one there is merino 100% um, merino so I'd just done a four ply or fingering weight, they call it now, don't they? See, they even all the names have changed. Fingering weight, 100% um, merino. And I so I thought I'll go for 100% acrylic, 12 ply or bulky yarn. And simply because I just love the colour. It's a pretty apricot. It's called denim. Um, and so it does look like denim. And I thought, oh yeah, that'll be cool. Nice fast knit. Um, just one of those fun to knit things. So I decided to do the leaf, and this is where I've got with it. So I have finished the yoke. Um, I've got the sleeves there, and I am about halfway down the um, the uh, jersey, a cardigan. Uh, what is it? It's a top. So it's knitting up really pretty. I'm really liking the wool. If you can see that. Now the pattern has quite a, um, a structured pattern on it and I got halfway through it and because of my sight I lost the plot completely. I lost where I was at, I couldn't work it out on the numbered rows, I got really frustrated. Um, so I had got to, if you can see that, got to there um, and so I, in the end I just threw my hands in the air and I made it up so I just added I thought well whatever I do as long as I put holes in it and they're symmetrical <laughs> it's gonna work so I'm sorry to who designed the leaf pattern that was 
I don't know if it was the pattern or if it was me being blind or just knitting tired one night. I don't know. Um, but I just gave up in the end. So that pattern is half the leaf pattern and half made up by me. Um, but it, it looks fine. And it's just a acrylic. It's just going to be an acrylic throw on in the weekend with a pair of jeans top. Um, but I am enjoying it. And it's I'm at the stage now where... You know, it's just mindless knitting, so stop and stitch. Just it's on 5.5s, so it's going quite quick. Um, yeah, it's not a bad knit, uh, for, yeah, and for a cheapest chips. And I suppose you know, the point one of the points that's quite interesting about that is this is cheapest chips, Uncle Bill's. I think it was five dollars a skein, five dollars something a skein, and I think I'm going to go through four skeins, so that's 20 bucks. This one here was um, expensive and cost me a hundred and actually I made a <laughs> I made a terrible mistake with this. When I picked it up, she said, "Oh, you do." I had to order it. Oh, you do know it's two hundred and sixty dollars, and I thought, "Yes, I do." <laughs> Thinking, "Oh, oh gosh, this is going to be um, you know my one expensive one every now and then sort of thing." And I got home and I got halfway through this to realise that I'd bought double the amount I need. But I really like the yarn and I know fading, um, what have they been calling it? It's fading, um, I'm not sure what it's called now, but when you uh, put two yarns together and, and you fade it up. So I thought I might get a gold and a burgundy or purple um, and because um, it's four ply. So if I got another four ply, I could make an eight ply and do something that's faded like... Um, just a nice cardigan, I think. Might be quite nice. So, although I cocked up with the cost, um, so that one, I've used half what I had, so it's cost me half of $135. So it's expensive. That's why it's called slow knitting and why you um, really want to enjoy them when you make them. But this one's cost me um, 20 bucks. Yeah, four skeins at $5. So $20 hundred and whatever thirty something dollars um i probably love both of them uh be it, i don't know how this will wash of course you know it's 100 percent acrylic might even have felt but hey ho we'll see how it goes it's just a bit of fun um i have also cast on because i'm at the stage with that the leaf one that it's just simple knitting i quite like to have um, a few whips going at a time so i like to have one that's Got, we're at, I'm at the complicated stage, like maybe at the um, the yoke or, <coughs> or the pattern. So at the complicated stage, I quite like to have one where I've got past that and I'm at just the mindless knitting. So the leaf is at that stage now. Um, and so I cast on, and I have, this is very early whip, so I have basically, wherever it is, in my Japanese knot bag. here I have literally just cast on um, and it's red cotton that the cotton is uh, trying to be organized bear with folks so this is Bellissimo Bellissimo Orchid 100% coated cotton and it's eight ply um, don't know the name but it's obviously clearly like a fire engine red um yeah and so i have cast on to make this little pan, little tank top here which is i'm sorry i can't even read that i'll tell you what next time when i've done a little bit more i will um have some more um of that one and I can show you that as a, a whip with a little bit more to show next time so those are my whips um, oh I've always got several other whips um, the prerequisite socks so I I have these socks that I bought this wool I bought a long long time ago from um, Tutti Fruity I don't even know if they're still going but I hope they are because it's beautiful wool it's four ply 
and these are I've just lived and lived and lived in these socks uh, and these ones lovely and soft yeah so they're very I've had these quite a few years now um, so I figured well I'll make some more um, and I, what I did with these I didn't know about circular knitting then so knitting so I had a seam in the back um, and this is a lot of you might even know this book the old the sock book um, it's quite a good book they are you know your basic socks but they're all seamed that none of them are in the round um, so that's where I got this pattern from nothing wrong with it really enjoyed it just a basic sock but now that I know circular needles and circular knitting ta -ta -da, where are my socks so organized she says here 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 I've brought myself oh my gosh and I am really struggling with these little needles with the DK I thought I would do I found a free pattern for a DK ankle sock um, and I've started that but oh, yeah it is making my hands hurt my fingers because I've got osteoarthritis and knitting helps with that but this is so it's going to be interesting to see how that goes and um, the reason I use that wool is I have and I've had that wool a long time um, I knitted myself a hat I don't wear hats a lot but because I don't drive and I walk everywhere um, I knitted this for oh, my hair out of the way um, for um, just to wear you know when I'm walking in the cold and some fingerless gloves these are things that I've knitted a long time ago, but um, what I thought I might do for a bit of fun for the kids for Christmas, for the grandkids, is I thought I'd make them a Japanese knot bag each with a hat and a pair of fingerless gloves. Socks if I get the chance, but I think that they might be pushing it a bit um, because they're all campers. They love camping, as I do too. Um, so I thought they could be their really cool little camping kits for by the fireside so they could just take the Japanese knot bag they know that they've got gloves and a hat in there and the, if I'm at the pure wall and uh, there's their little camping camping set so uh, that's that's what I'm hoping to do for Christmas you know all good intentions and things but um, the circular needles I, I did teach myself via video magic loop and I did uh, this these sleeves in magic loop and I quite enjoyed doing them but I just thought I would try because I don't know if you watch the podcast which I absolutely love um, and it's Kevin and Ray and it's called knitting at the ready and one, one of them always says nine inch circular needles a little bit more sexy than that but anyway so I thought I'd give it a try and um, not sure how they're going but I'll keep you up with that one um, yeah so it's, that's the knitting world but um, let's see so I just thought I'd also show you a little bit about what I've been doing in the other crafty parts of my world uh, and the first one is wheaty bags um, for for well for me these ones are but I have made others I made a whole group of them so I've, I've actually given them away I've given my grandkids my grandkids now have a wheaty bag each um, so I put one in the freezer and because my sight I my eyes hurt a lot I can use them on my eyes cold which is lovely or if there's an injury and the kids get hurt so I just keep that I don't know if you've seen wheaty bags but it's just full of plain old wheat and I use a nice um, flannelette and then I've done a slightly bigger one, and I have that one for, um, I put in the microwave for heat. So if you get tummy ache or neck ache, you know, it's often you get a sore neck or, um, yeah, or, or you can put one each side <laughs> if, you, you know, if you've been knitting a lot and you've got sore shoulders. So just a quick make, nice and easy, wheaty bags. Sewing, I was in a shop we have in town called Evans, and I just absolutely fell in love with this material it's just, I just 
could not walk past it. It's just, oh, sorry, I've just washed it, so I haven't ironed it, so forgive me, it's a wee bit wrinkled. Um, and it's a rayon. Uh, but I just fell in love with the colour, I just and the pattern was just beautiful. And I thought, I don't know what I'm going to make, so I just bought, um, what did I buy? Three metres. Uh, so I made a pair of Palazzo pants out of this piece because it's so soft, so, so soft. So um, I've worn them heaps. I just washed them this morning. That's why they're a bit wrinkled. Um, yeah, just simple. Just used a, I actually just used a pair of pyjama pants that I know fit me well. Um, and also my sister-in-law who lives with us has got a cool pair of Palazzo pants that gave me the idea and used hers to get an idea of the width of the leg. Uh, so I've just put a little bow bow on it, and uh, yeah, super simple, half an hour sewing, or an hour probably to make, uh, beautiful um, swing to it, and I've had heaps of comments, every time I wear them people say, oh I love your pants, so although my partner did say I look like I was wearing pyjamas, but <laughs> what would he know? <laughs> so that's a finished object in my sewing, and so um I went back to the material shop uh, and bought, saw this. Oh, I love it, love it, love it. Um, and I thought, right, nice skirt for work. So I've got this old skirt that I've had for like a bazillion years because I do take care of my clothes. If I like something, I, you know, really take care of it. This was the cheapest chips. I think it was eight bucks at the warehouse many years ago. Um, so I'm just going to cut a pattern off that, make it a bit longer because this is a wee bit short uh, for work, and have like a um, pencil skirt. This has got quite a bit of give to it. Not quite as stretchy as that, but it's got enough give to it that it can um, be a pencil skirt. So yeah, that's um, it's actually cut out ready to go. So that's my knitting, that's my sewing. Uh, and my crafts and I've got hopefully I don't move the camera when I pick this up oh, oh. tomato plant that from the op shop so it cost me nothing um, normally I'm going to put it back because it's dripping I'm going to plant that in the veggie garden normally I would plant my uh, tomatoes Labor weekend but a um, chap I know said no 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 you just plant them in late November and they'll flourish we're in New Zealand, by the way, um, and so I'm going to try late November um, because what happened when I what happens is I plant my tomato plants and they they just go really 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 slowly and then they bolt in late November. So he might have something there. So that's my mission today in the veggie garden um, is to plant out that, that tomato plant. And what else have I got out there to plant out? I've got some peas out there as to plant as well. So. Um, but at the moment we're trying to put make two big runs for the chooks so that they can stay um, pegged in because they roam free uh, so that I can do my veggies without worry that the chooks are going to eat them or scratch them out of the garden. So um, I can only use my uh, raised gardens at the moment. I can't use my slightly lower ones, which is where I want to put my tomatoes. So I'm not sure how I'll do that, but I think I'll just put some wire fencing around it, right around it, um, until we can actually get the chook runs finished so that the chooks can stay. They'll still get out, we'll still let them out, but maybe when we're about and can shoot them away from the veggie gardens. Um, yeah, so that's those. I thought I would give you a tip um, each time on sort of something for your mental health, something for stress, etc. Um, because that's what I do for my day job, uh, is support people through challenging times. One of the tips that's been really useful for me um, for years is because I've always been a headachey person, we said tension headaches. And what I noticed is that I really clench my teeth. And so my jaw, you know, gets really tight and tense. So a tip I learned years ago is if you put the tip of your tongue on the back of your top front teeth, and you just have to sit it, sit them there. You don't have to push or anything. It's very hard to clench your jaw. So while you're knitting, if you sit your tongue there, then your jaw bones, your jaw will relax. If you keep doing it, your jaw will learn what relaxed feels like, and it'll be easier for you to do it each time. 
because it'll go oh that's right you want relaxed so um, yeah just a little tip for you to uh, keep your jaw muscles unclenched and that will help with all of the tension that can come from that and grinding teeth so tongue on the tip of your on the back front teeth just sit up there it's almost impossible to, to clench your jaw um, and it's, you know while you're knitting is a really good time to do it so that's my tip on mental health for the week um, and as I said well, I'm going to try and do one each time I do one of these um, my purchases acquisitions um, I've bought quite a few bits like one skeins two skeins of odd cheap wools as I've gone through Uncle Bill's and warehouse um, just for um, just because <laughs> I love the wool really and they can be handy for one skeiner type things oh that's another that's another um, um, whip I've got I am doing um, Shirley Myrtle's um, The Jeweled so that's a bit there it's really pretty it's cashmere it's eight ply now I did start with a four ply um, and <laughs> I ripped it I frogged it I uh, ripped it back so many times that I just got I won't say the word but upset and nah it was, and it was a sight thing for me. It was wool. It wasn't. It was not easy to knit. I couldn't see it properly on the needles, uh, so I just got frustrated. So I thought, right, I've got to have. Um, I really wanted to do this because I love. I love the beads on it. I don't know if you can see those. So each point has a little bead, pretty bead on it, and a little cable and a bit of lace, and it comes up into. A, um, it's a scarf. So. Um, I brought this wool, it is Sublime, um, and it's Baby Cashmere Merino DK, oh, and Silk, so it's Baby Cashmere Merino Silk DK, and that's it there, and I brought that at the embroidery shop in Masterton, and it's, oh, it's like, well it is you can feel the cashmere in this so it's going to make a lovely scarf so that is that is um my bejeweled which is yet another truly myrtle um, i'm also doing her wardrobe toolbox at the moment and if you've heard of that it's awesome so that's it there truly myrtle libby johnson's pattern bejeweled enjoying it enjoying it a lot um <laughs> Sorry, I missed that one before. Um, and then I was going to, I think I've done it. Oh, acquisitions, acquisitions. Um, so I haven't bought a great deal of wool because I've got, I've promised myself I'll use some of my stash up. I've got several um, ideas ahead. Um, but of course I've got summer, so, you know, that I, I don't, I tend to not do a huge amount over summer unless it's small just because um, it's just so hot to knit. But what I did do is I discovered Knit Pro needles the other day and I have fallen in love with them. They, I have really, really enjoyed knitting with them. They match my, um, they work for my sight because they're a darker colour so I make sure I've got a good contrast on my needles. Um, I've really enjoyed them and I know other people like Chao Gu and, and that's great too. I think, you know, it's what you like is the thing. It's a bit like I remember when I was knitting when I was a young um, teenager and I was doing a lot of errands and things. I had this bright lime green number four millimeter needles and I just love knitting with those. In fact, I think I've still got them, but they were my um, needle of choice. You do get used to uh, needles that you like and I, people have even bought, you can get square needles now. It's like... That might be quite interesting. I'd quite like to give them a try. But anyway, I loved the Knit Pro so, so, so much. And every time I had a, a new whip, I would have to go, oh, I haven't got, haven't got enough Knit Pro needles or cables. So I decided to buy myself a pack. Uh, so I ordered a pack um, and I couldn't see it. It was just, a, you know, I ordered it um, and had to wait because shipping with, you know, the time, what's happening in the planet at the moment is... Um, interesting and so I got my kit the other day 
so it's got um, from 2.75 right through till um, I actually don't know what right through to at least I do um, if I can read that eight millimeter I think yeah eight millimeter so from 2.75 right through to eight mils and a whole lot of cables and a whole lot of um, all of the things you need uh, to um, the only complaint I'd have is that this is a bit crappy I've paid a lot of money and I it's just a plastic thing I kind of expected something a little a little nicer than that so sorry Nip Pro, if you do watch this um, it's a lot of money and you do I, I do like that it's clear though and I can see so I suppose yeah you can't have it always can you but anyway that was quite an expensive outlay but I figured because I'm such a like I really take care of my stuff I've got as I say I'm pretty sure I've still got the needles I was using when I was about 18 um I didn't mind because I will take care of them and they'll last so a big outlay but hey ho uh yeah so that's that's my series the other thing I forgot to say right at the beginning it was Kenzie's birthday um she's six my Kenzie is underneath the table that this is on, or ironing board, is this is on. Sound asleep, you know what dogs do when they're dreaming and twitching, she's doing that. But it was her birthday this week, and she turned six. So she's getting on, the old girl. Um, yeah, she still works really well. She's a great guide dog, um, and I just wouldn't be without her. And I can talk a little bit more in, in the future about how she works and what she does. Um, she does have her own Facebook page if you want to visit though, Kenzie the Guide Dog. Uh, you can go and visit that. So that's me. Enjoy your week and I'll catch up with you next time. Bye.